happy morning. Uh, myself, I'm Shalini, and my teammates, Ms. Praveena and Ms. Parmalata, are here to deliver today's topic. So, before going into today's topic and introduce, uh, introducing today's topic, I would like to share a few, uh, a small incident what happened in my childhood. This is something happened to my brother. So, that story will be related to you, and trust me, I will not make it so boring. I'll try to make it interesting. Okay. So maybe this is about 20 years back where uh, my brother, uh, we have found something uh, very different in him because he cannot able to communicate in words like how we communicate and uh, he is not like normal children at the age of 3. My parents were very worried, even I'm, I'm just almost 5 years, I could get what they are thinking but I myself don't know what is happening to them. So if you see other children also, you cannot be able to play and talk with other children. And there were people who used to brand that very badly and it was like very hurtful, uh, hurting to the parents. So that is how like few of us suggested to go to an occupational ther uh, therapy or speech therapy. So we introduced, uh, introduced into those therapies and by day by day we could able to feel the difference between between himself and he started to communicate things, he started to talk in words that was uh, really, uh, for us it was like in heaven. So that's how we, I have come to know about today's topic and my topic for today is delay development and the disabilities between children. So maybe like we have handled so many children also, so at least once in our lifetime we would have come across uh, children like them with some uh, delayed development. So what are the things we could do as teachers or how we are going to help them? That is what I am going to share my views about uh, about them to you all. It would be uh, okay if it is an interactive session also. So like uh, first thing even in my class I have come across the child. From the day one, this is something what happened in the last academic year. From the day one, like I noticed the child, the child uh, he don't even know to write. He used to draw, if I write A on the board, he used to draw the A, he will not write actually. So that is how I uh, tend to show more interest on him. I try to know what is happening with the child. The child cannot be able to communicate. He is only uh, he is very familiar in communicating in his mother tongue. Of course, I did that too. I talked to him in his mother tongue only. And later, like uh, at a certain point of time, I thought it is very difficult for me to handle that boy. But unexpectedly, like a uh, few techniques which have changed, and the boy also now is normal to other children also. So uh, for us, every child is unique. There's nothing called as that uh, if the child is doing very well and the other child is doing nothing, there's nothing difference. For us, each one is unique. Even though the child is not good in academics, the child can shine up in other activities like drawing, sports, like that. So there, for us, uh, we need to understand that there will be some uh, delay in developing their skills, but there's nothing called as no development or the child is like, uh, we must not like keep, uh, keep the child away from the others. And the next thing is, all child have something to achieve in their, thing. that's their development. Even they try, to, they know the, within themselves but they cannot able to uh, tell it out. This child in my class, is very, uh, actually he wants to become an artist and he used to draw very well. So from the day, on the, the first day, I noticed that he is drawing the alphabet. So I told him, to, I showed him an image of a balloon, I to, uh, told him to draw. He draw the balloon and then he colored the balloon too. So that's kind of uh, giving me an encouragement. Okay, the child is doing what I told. So daily I gave him little, little, uh, day by day, uh, little, little work and encouragement. Of course, I treated him personally. I asked him what happened in his home. I asked him about all. Uh, what he did the previous day everything so the child developed a good communication with me and he started sharing more things and he also told that uh, he wants to become a pilot also and uh, uh, art and craft expo what we had he did a uh, plane i don't know the type of plane but he did a, a plane and uh, 
a, 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 he did a, a plastic plane with the water bottles and the other things. That's the thing where I could able to know even this child can develop his skills. The only thing what we need to do is we need to help the children to develop their skills. So uh, coming up to this thing, so every day like we face many uh, difficult difficulties with the children. Not only uh, about their behavior, even the behavior was like very uh, bad. He used to hit other children, he used to poke other things, he used to take other children things. So sometimes what they do, the many of them told him that nobody want to become friend with him, nobody will share his things because he will not keep his things properly. So again, uh, sometimes he also felt that he is feeling alone, he used to go and sit at the back also. Again, I made him to come and sit with me for two days. I told him that I will be your friend. I gave, I gave my things to him, I gave my pencils. Again, uh, again he started, the other children saw me and started to talk with them and they become friendly with, uh, with them also. So as we teachers, like we can do a few things to make them to uh, uh, make them and we can give them a good environment even in school and classroom also. We can ask the children to talk with them, we can ask the uh, ask the peers to play with them. So there would be like few changes in the child and we can also set goals for them. For example, like I gave him goals like since he, I found out his talent in uh, drawing, I asked him to draw each day one one new new thing and the child uh, really draws very well. So we can set standards like that to achieve the, achieve the goal and we can also give them appreciation for that. Something what everybody, even we expect that appreciation is something which is very essential for us too. Even like whatever the simple thing he do, I used to appreciate him very good or super I will tell him and he gets very excited and those are the small small things which have completely changed the child. Since the child is in developing only, I'm not, I'm not telling that the child has developed very well but since he is in the developing stage but I remember how he was there in the day one and now that's a great development in the child what I found out. And the next thing like uh, what are the few things like the foundational institutions can take. We can also like uh, first uh, notice the child as we already do the anecdotal and narrative records. We used to absorb the child and we will write what uh, we have saw in the child. Like that we need to notice the child, we need to learn about the child, we can observe the child and we can uh, do what they expected from us. Naturally, apart from the family, the child, the second expectation uh, uh, directly turned towards them. Even though they will not open their mouths and ask, but they will expect that my teacher will do because we, uh, we play a vital role between themselves. More than they spend time with their family, almost they are spending time with ourselves also. So we can uh, learn about the child and we can start giving them personal attention to grab a child within you. The next step is we can have a daily record basis. Like for example on the first day like I noticed that the child is uh, uh, not writing and he's just drawing the alphabets. I gave him small small writing works also and I gave him small drawing also. Like that we can have a uh, homework for them and we can also have a record. Like first week how much he have uh, improved, second week how much he have grown and like that we have a daily record improvement which also able to tell about the child, how the child is developing a skill. Third thing is uh, if we will like notice some sort of uh, attention or some sort of treatment the child needs, for example, uh, some children who are very slow in talking, maybe at the age of 8, they can able to communicate well. But there are children who cannot communicate or some children have stammering also. We can also tell the parents to help them from their side, but we cannot brand them that your child has so and so, you cannot, we cannot brand them. But we can tell like a suggestion to the parents and we can ask them to take him to any uh, ask, uh, any medical consultant if the teacher knows or we can ask the end of the institution to about this child and we can also the head of the institution can give certain advices to the parents so that uh, the parent will be easily agree to this and they can take step for the child also. 
And the next thing is the, the schools like uh, us, they could have a tie up with a medical consultant or any occupational therapist, famous therapist, so that if the child feel any, uh, if the child faces any things, the head of the tuition can give a recommendation. So the parents will be like very um, friendly to go with it because none of the parents could, uh, they will not accept the child if the child is being like that. But we know this is not a very big uh, issue, but the parents are not ready to accept. But if the school gives something like that, they would try to at least go to the therapist and ask what about the child also. So these are the few things we can, uh, as uh, when we are running an institution, we can few, few, uh, few things we can do. And the next thing also, we can also have the record from the consultants, what the record they are giving, we can also file it up and we can give us also our suggestions for them. And for them, of course they are not like other children, we can also give uh, individual educational policy. Like we can frame a curriculum for them also and like that's all. That is how we can be able to help them in academic wise also. As roles of teacher like uh, I already told you we can set certain goals for them to uh, achieve their success. We can also give them extra time. What they need is patience from us. So just like the, it's of course we cannot give all our patience to them. But if a child like this, it's like uh, uh, something which is very close to my uh, my heart about this topic. My uh, personal suggestion is we can say, uh, spend time with them, we can sit with them, we can ask them to do because there's no other big work going ahead rather than uh, sitting with a child and communicating. We can talk with them, we can even uh, at the time we can talk, we can be able to communicate for two days, third day the child will be expecting and the child will be coming and telling us what are the difficulties he himself is. That is what that is what we can do. And the next thing is we can also give them encouragement. Like simple work, even like if the child picked, picked up a paper and wrote in the dustbin also, by telling him very good and giving him appreciation, praising him, will also help the child to develop easily. We can give plenty of time. When we are giving only a certain time for the other children, but here we can give plenty of time and plenty of practical methods also. Uh, more than the theoretical learning, they used to, they have the tendency to learn in practical or audio-visual so that they can easily grasp the content what they are, go, what we are going to deliver. Next is, uh, we can also like for example, uh, we can use uh, use their names like be like this so it will be an encouragement also we can tell the other children see he have done that and uh, she have done that you can even you can follow this also that will be an uh, appreciation to them and it will it is again easy for the child to develop what the child wants to develop next is to communication well, mostly these disability children when they are when they feel felt the delay they cannot be able to come up high and especially at the age of uh, uh, from 5 to 8 years when they start to know their own self when they felt that I am not like other children it is uh, directly that we are uh, we are like uh, it's like we are just closing this future because when they start to think that there is no, uh, no, I'm not like other children when the child start to think, the child won't develop his skills, the child will be just like that. The child feel, feels very uh, demastrated and the child like uh, being sort of uh, alone and the child, even though the child have talents also, the child cannot show us their talents. That is what, that's the thing. So their age of five to eight, we need to sit with the child, ample time we can sit, uh, spend with them, not only about parents but as teachers also we can take up the roles and we can spend with, the, uh, spend with the child and we can tell the parents about what the child is feeling also because this is what nowadays is happening. Many parents are working and they cannot be able to spend the, child, uh, spend the time with the child. So teacher, they are expecting teachers to spend the uh, spend and talk with them and communicate with them and we can tell about the child to the parents it would be a uh, very good uh, if we follow this and the next thing is always support and honor the child even it can be simple things we can honor and support the child that would be a very good
thing for them. So these are the few things that I have listed out and what I have learned from my practical things. And our next topic is coming up to school security and safety measures. And one of my teammates will deliver this. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Vandalita from KRM Public School. Uh, here I am going to explain about the chapter 8 that is about uh, safety and security in school. Uh, parents are believing the school that the children are safe, uh, children are very safe here. So we have to ensure the physical safety and the emotional safety and the uh, child sexual abuse. Uh, so here in this topic, I am going to explain all these safety things. All our educational settings are committed to provide an environment that is not only stimulating and joyful, but safe and secure as well. First, physical safety. The teacher must ensure that children are physically visible at all the times. A yeah, responsible adult must supervise children during break and play time. It is a teacher duty to ensure that the children are safe even in the break time as well as the play time, what they are playing and uh, how they are behaving even in the playground and even when they are in the break time. All buildings and equipments must adhere to the safety standards. And the teacher must ensure that the balconies are riding on the balconies and safe electrical connections and also the electrical equipment and open wells. If any open wells are in the school, that must be closed. Safety equipment like fire extinction that should be maintained and also available, available in all the areas in the school. And teacher also must have a knowledge regarding the uh, fire extinguisher that is the various types are there like A, B, C, D, K. So teacher must ensure uh, the no that, they, that they have a knowledge regarding the fire extinguisher. So what is the type of type A fire and what is the B type and what is the C type and what is the D type and what are the safety measures they have to uh, take uh, when uh, any emergency case happens. Windows should not open in the classroom. Uh, of course, windows should open in the classroom, but uh, when the but uh, even even it is a source of accidents when the children often hit their heads and also window shutter as they stand up or else move around in the classroom. Uh, this type of accidents happen especially in the pre-primary classes like one and two when the children are around in the class or else when. Uh, when the children are only in the class or it, it, then when the children are only in the classrooms. A first aid kit should be kept in working order in the school. And all the teachers must be trained, trained, uh, trained in the use of basic first aid. All the teachers must have a knowledge about the use of the basic first aid. If any uh, cut happens or is uh, the child is not feeling well, or the he or she is having a, a any a fit, fits problem or anything else, the teacher must have a knowledge to treat a child. Nutritious midday meals must be served under safe and hygienic condition. Yes, meals also play a very major role for the child's growth and development. A teacher must ensure that the children are having the balanced diet. In case of an accident or a medical emergency, the supervising adult, that is the example teacher or a teacher, must take a decision and inform parents immediately. Then emotional safety. No adult in school may use physical violence or corporal punishment with the children. Here the corporal punishment, if the, child, if the teacher is asking the child to stand outside the class or the teacher is insulting the child in front of other children, these are the examples for the corporal punishment. The, uh, the teacher should avoid the corporal punishment and also the physical violence with the children. Adult must not bully, harass or intimidate children even by implication or covertly. They must not use abusive or demeaning language or label children. The teacher should not label any children. For an example, that, uh, if a child um, steal anything from the any student like a pencil, eraser, sharpener, the teacher should not label the particular child that he is a thief or he or she is a, he or she is not good at studies. The teacher should not label any child. The, the teacher should tell some moral stories and change the child behavior. Teacher must provide equal opportunity and ensure equal participant of all the children in every day activity. 
teacher should provide equal opportunity to all the children uh, because if the teacher is focusing on only one child if the teacher is not focusing on the other child definitely the other child will get uh, uh, the other child will think that the teacher is doing some partiality so it also affect the child emotionally the teacher must provide equal opportunity to all the children teacher must use a positive language with the children at all the times you can do it you are the best one so when we use a positive language the child can do better the next one is child sexual abuse that is uh, in accordance with the protection of children from sexual offense the posco act 2012 posco is defined as the protection of ch ch child from sexual offenses there must be zero tolerance of the child sexual abuse teacher and all other adults must aware of the child sexual abuse and the posco act so this posco act is started on 2012 and all the teacher and adult must have a educator regarding this if the child has any unexplained bruises or injuries on the face leg bottom or as the torso becoming withdrawn aggressive or self destructive the teacher should ask the reason or if the child is hesitate to say what happened exactly or as the bruises or unexplained this is a teacher duty to find out what happened to the child and uh, it should be educated to the child uh for an example the teacher can tell some moral stories and also uh, uh, do some puppet shows and also the teacher can uh, explain the child regarding the safe touch and unsafe touch this help a child uh, what happened to them but what happened to them exactly and they can come over if teacher not a significant if, if the teacher notice a significant patterns of change in the child's behavior they must be reported immediately to the head teacher principal or supervisor all procedures to deal with such incidents must ensure safety of the child in all cases the most important consideration to be taken into the account in, is the protection of children confidential at all times need to be maintained if the child is abused sexually it should be maintained confidentially at all the times information regarding concerns of possible child abuse should only by shared on a need to know basis other overall other overall safety measures addresses and phone number of parent should be regularly updated and updated and kept accessible emergency contact number must be available for all the children and adults yes it is a teacher duty to know the child address and the phone number if the parent has changed the phone number and also the address we have to update it regularly information about any particular medical condition the child has any problem like fix or is they have any medical uh, condition it should be noticed or preventive measures to be obtained at the time of admission and be updated regularly particularly everybody in the school should be aware of the children having asthma or uh, epilepsy or no allergies anti epileptic or anti allergic medicines as prescribed by the doctor treating these children should be available in the school the school must have written consent from parents and caregivers to use these